personal committee. Pat, are you ready? Hold on, Gil. Pat, Gil, are you you're, Gil, you're set to go. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Okay, no, no. Uh, call the meeting for personnel committee. Uh -huh. I'll take a motion in the previous minutes. So moved. Second. Anybody second? Second. Unanimous. Okay. <laughs> resolution number two, a resolution amending resolution 283 for 1992 as subsequently amended to restore the committee to full vacancy in response to the COVID-19 related health emergencies and uncertainties and the budgetary realities caused by the current global pandemic. Motion move. Second. Whoa, whoa, what? discussion? Yeah, we'll have a little, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate uh, the, the motion to, to approve and to move it. Um, I just want to give a little bit of update. Um, I'm on day 89 of state active duty with the National Guard. Uh, for those of you who've been trying to get a hold of me after this way or the other, I've just been, the hours have been crazy and I apologize for that, but I am local with the family, so that's, that's fortunate. I'm not down in Queens. Um, you know, working with a with a medical examiner, which is good. Um, we're just closely closely monitoring reopening activities for spikes in new cases, but things are kind of quieting down now, and I hope it stays that way. Um, all the members of the legislature are doing a great job with PPE. Um, the sheriff is getting us more. But we can get creative in terms of how we get it out there. Um, for those of you who can do it safely, um, you know, we can have new ways for you to get that out. So you've done a great job. Um, Exciting new ideas coming out legislatively and uh, and also to new ideas to help our community. So everyone's been doing a great job with the response. Um, but on the resolution that is in question tonight, um, the committee to fill has existed in one or another since 1992. Its purpose has always been to provide re review for positions that become vacant during the year. In economically depressed times, the committee becomes even more relevant because it can act as a more formal review of vacancies and potential cost savings to Albany County. As we have clearly entered a time of economic uncertainty, the committee is relevant now more than ever. This iteration of the committee to fill is based on the most recent legislatively creative body with the addition of the chairs of the committees on audit and finance and personnel as ex officio members to provide some review by the legislature, which falls under our budget purview anyways. For those of you who are wondering who is covered by this, it's simple, all non-elected positions, regardless of department. The committee cannot be charged with withholding the filing of elected offices. For instance, if our esteemed clerk of the county were to win the lottery and retire tomorrow, that would not go before the committee to fill vacancies. But if a member of his staff were to do the same, that would go before the committee. It's a good measure to have in place now to review the day-to-day -day potential cost savings caused by vacant lines. And that's why it existed for the past 25 plus years. It was never formally withdrawn. And I think that now more than ever, it should be reinstituted in this format. If there's any questions. Yeah, I have some questions. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair Pre People. Uh, the resolve, the fourth uh, resolve clause from the bottom says that the committee to fill vacancy shall be charged with the review of all county employee line items, except those of the office of elected officials. Are you saying then uh, the jobs that the, uh, these elected officials are uh, responsible for are included, but only the office itself is not included in the, in the uh, the vacancy? Correct. Thing? Correct. Okay. okay. Uh, that's something uh, I want I definitely wanted to clear. Has this, it says it lapsed last year. Um, has this committee been there since 92 and we're just bringing it back to life or how does that work, uh, Andrew? Well, Pat can probably speak, or Pat or Kevin could probably speak to the specifics, but um, we, we look back and, and all the, you know, the measures the county has taken during an economic downturn, one of them. And I think the first iteration dated back to 1992, and it's been changed and amended since then to, to meet the circumstances. If, Pat, you can correct me if I'm wrong. No, that's absolutely right, sir. Um, it, it just, obviously, even as recent as three months ago, four months ago, we were in a pretty good economic time. Uh, it, it seemingly just stopped meeting. It's not a, exactly clear why, but it, we're not in that time anymore. So it seems like a, a good time to make sure that it, it continues its function. So I you know is there a sun pet? It seems like we're just uh, we're not creating something new. We're just bringing it up from being dormant. Or so is there some kind of sunset provision on this uh, that says I, I would I wouldn't think so. And I hope I hope we would stay on top of it, and we would continue to to work with the relevant parties to to address all vacant lines. Um, 
you know, now through however many months and years it takes us to see our way through it, even when we get over the hump in terms of the economic impact, we continue to, to have an insight and visibility on you know, all the vacant lines that exist in the county and what the plan is with them. What about, say, the water pur purification district with, you know, uh, those kinds of things that are a little bit different in terms of agencies? Would they also be covered? Well, they I, don't, I don't know why that one's different. Board. Mark, but because uh, they they're funded a little bit differently, uh, I think they get their funding from uh, the districts that they serve. Well, ultimately, the way the committee works is when the a line goes vacant, the department head goes before the committee seeking to have that vacancy made available to them for the purposes of hiring. Uh, Angelo would still be doing that, and, and in this instance, if he's outside funded, he's going to have a very good case for getting that position. Uh, released and, and allowed to be filled, but that that would be covered. Uh, that would be covered. Uh, I guess what you're all the only the only one people who are not covered are elected officials. The, the what are the four or five, or the county legislators and the, the executives. Correct. The, the, yeah, you, we we couldn't prohibit the the elected officials' position. One of the, okay, one of the questions I had was there's only three voting members, and there aren't any legislators voting, even though this is passed as a legislator uh, initiative, no legislators get to vote on this. And what's the uh, rationale well, behind that? Well, that's, an audit finance, right? that's an interesting question. Um, you know, we didn't want this to be viewed as an act of aggression or malevolence or whatever you want to call it. I'm open to the idea of giving these members a vote on this committee, uh, but I wanted to demonstrate to you know, the county exec, the sheriff and all the relevant parties that we're not out here trying to nitpick. Um, I think if we can demonstrate that we're trying to be helpful and doing a good review, I'm open to you know making a change. But at this point, I just wanted I wanted to you know, communicate that we're here to help and we're here to you know to, to come in and and help with the review and also to communicate to the member that you know we just we've we've always had this capability. Is we need to take you know full control of it and do it. But I'm open to changing it and, and getting a vote, and I'll I'll be interested in discussing that with. Um, with Gil and Wanda, you know, going forward. Yeah, also on, on the committee makeup, uh, uh, Chairman Joyce, there's no Republicans either as voting members or non-voting members. And, uh, you know, we do represent 70,000 residents in this county, and yet there, there aren't any uh, representatives on either voting or non-voting. Well, Gil and Wanda are your representative on the committee. And if you have insight on a vacancy, um, we've set up a construct for Gil and Wanda to communicate that to the members. And if you have input, um, on a vacant position, Gil or Wanda could communicate that across to the relevant parties. My understanding, and I, I, I wonder if anyone else, my understanding is that there's going, there's a hiring freeze executed last night. Is anyone else familiar with that? I'm not. No one, no legislator? Okay. No. Okay, excuse me. Could, this is Arna. It's Arna Zogan. Could I just ask clarification because we don't have the previous resolutions so is the modification of this resolution, the addition of the ex, uh, ex officio members, the two legislative members, and that's it? Pretty much, yes, Artis. I think, Sean, you had a question? Uh, yeah, I was just looking at the resolve clause regarding the elected officials, and I'm concerned that somebody other than those that are here tonight might construe that is that their entire departments yeah uh, maybe we could specify the the position of those elected to office instead of saying the office of elected officials yeah there definitely there's there's vagueness in the language there's no doubt about it but i don't Shot think it's vague it. i think it's a it's a it could be misinterpreted that's all Accept those positions of, of, of elected office? I, I would, that would actually do it, yeah. All right, I'm fine with or that. The, or those uh, positions of those elected to office. Or just name them. Yeah. Or just list them. I mean, it's the 39 legislators and then the, you know, the, the, you know, the other ones. Uh, that would be, that would be sp specific. Anybody have any other questions? 
So Sean, Sean, I, I just, I'm sorry. Are you making a, a motion on that, Sean, or are you just throwing that out for suggestion? Suggesting, I, okay. I can. I, okay, no, no. I, it's just language. I don't think it, it affects okay. the content at all. Okay. Just language. Well, I'd be glad to make a motion just to list um, the, the elected officials and the 39 legislators rather than the language it has now. By title? Yeah. The county control, the county executive. Well, there's no, there's no vagueness. I mean, that's that's simple enough, isn't it? Yep. I make that motion. Second. What are we Second. voting on now? So, this... so Mr. Just Grimm, making a list. Mr. Grimm, can you just specify exactly what you want to change? What the motion is? The motion right. is, yeah, the fourth resolve clause from the bottom. Instead yeah. of saying, except those of the office of elected officials, which is to me confusing, just to list the, the exceptions. Okay. Uh, so each, each of the countywide off, uh, elected officials and the 39 legislators, because I believe that's it, according to what okay. Andrew said. So to uh, Mr. Graham, just to list the individual separate electeds and the legislature rather yeah. than, okay. Yeah. So that, that then is the motion uh, that's being made, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Gil, did you hear that? Yes, what are we making a motion about? So, Gil, there's a motion on the floor here to amend the chairman's proposed resolution in the fourth resolve clause to list, to spell out the individual separate elected, so the comptroller, the county executive, uh, the sheriff, yeah. coroner, uh, and the, the legislators, uh, rather than... The so that's yeah. the motion. You would need a second on that. Uh, before hey, it can be Gil, I'm good with this if you are. Okay. So, Gil, you need right. a second because you need to see. So, would it? Well, can I ask a question? Would it include? Wait, would this include like judges, like county judges as well? No, they're, they're, they're not, not all. Under, see. What, Sean? What? They're, they're under OCA, so we have no control. They're under, they're under the state. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably a plenty of laws precluding us from doing that anyways, any elected official, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Let, let's get specific. I'm fine. Yeah, just, yeah. So we're, everybody's clear based on what Chairman Joyce just said. Uh, I think the language will make it clear. I seconded that motion. Yeah, Lynn seconded. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, Gil, you have a second. Uh, now you need to have a vote. Uh, yep. of favor. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. So it's unanimous. Okay, now Gil, you need to have a vote on the uh, resolution as amended, as we just amended. So you need a, a motion uh, to make move a that. motion for that. I'll make that motion. The second. 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 So motion and second. Anybody opposed? <laughs> oh, so that's unanimous too. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We'll the number three. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Andrew. Thank you, Mr. Joyce. Bye, Andrew. Bye, Bye. Amending resolution number 279 for 2000 regarding the modification of the fee structure for participation in the civil service examination, waiving the fees for veterans taking open competitive or promotional exams. Any discussion on that? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it says no fiscal impact. Obviously, there's a fiscal impact. And one of the things we've tried to stress is that too often we put no fiscal impact for things that have fiscal impact. Now, I, I know this isn't a large fiscal impact, but we certainly should know what the fiscal impact is, and it should be in the legislation. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, someone speak to that? Yep. Yep. Mike here. Um, Mike, okay. so I had this exact discussion with uh, the director of civil service, and the, the fiscal impact basically could be um, termed as, as negligible. Um, they're the, they went through the past um, uh, uh, exams and over the past couple of years and determined that the only time that it may have a, a larger impact is if uh, a bunch of the exams that typically um, attract vet, veteran um, uh, uh, you know, applicants, uh, test takers, um, so this is like correction officers, police officers, sheriff deputies. It, there was only one instance that was 2017 where all of the exams fell in the same year because, of course, they don't give the exams from a scheduling perspective uh, always on the same year. 
And then that increase in expenditure would have been $1,100. So um, that consideration has been made in this. Um, I don't know if it answers your question, Mr. Grimm, but to your question, that's the answer. So, but I thought it was also typically, it might be like $200. I think I thought I read somewhere, Mike, uh, it's between 200 and 1100. I'm sorry, say again. Um, that was an unusual year when everyone is- uh, is that's exactly- 1100, the I that, that's, that's a good barometer for the highest impact. Exactly, and the lowest goes all the way down to, to nothing at all. That's correct, or handle- it I think it was like 200. What I'd like to do is, because I don't want to say there's no fiscal impact when there is. That's just, just the way it is. I'd like to amend it to say, check the yes for fiscal impact and say, the expectation is it would be between 200 and 1100 dollars uh, in any given year. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I can I can submit a, an amended or I'm, you don't need to amend any. Well, Kevin. Kevin yeah, Mr. Grimm, I, I think I, I lost you there a little bit. Are you talking about amending the RLA forms? Well, whatever we whatever we're yeah whatever we're voting on. Uh, so what? there's nothing uh, there's nothing to amend. You know the I think what you're referencing are the standard boilerplate RLA forms that are in each RLA. Um, Certainly, the executive's office, uh, if you're requesting it, can submit an updated one, but there's no official action to take here. It's, those yeah. Are, that, that's those, yeah. yeah, I'm just talking what I have in front of me there. Uh, yeah. If Mike, you just, I'm, I'm perfectly fine voting for it as long as we check the yes box and say, you know, it's between what well, I just said, between 200 and 1100, uh, you know, that would be so, the so What I'll do is, to your point, I'll make sure that the I'll get an amended backup to Kevin so that when you folks are voting on it at your general meeting, if yeah. that information isn't updated, then I haven't done what you wanted. And if it is, then, then I have, and you can vote accordingly. Okay. All right, thanks. Any more discussion on the motion? Yeah, can I, I just have a question. I'm reading the veterans' rights. Did you acknowledge me? I'm sorry, Mr. E. Uh, Gil, you got uh, Sean. Uh, with yeah, go ahead, Sean, yeah. The, uh, the definition of a veteran here is defined as someone serving during wartime only. Is that our intent? Um, I think that was the intent, yes. Um, obviously, there's different um, types of veterans, levels of veterans, discharges, uh, but yes, this is kind of what the what we were going for. So if they didn't serve, if, if they served during times of peace, they're not eligible only only during wartime, and it's actually defined definitively yeah. as during the dates of war or conflicts. Uh, yeah, it looks like civil service was going for that, yes. Okay. I have no objection to that. I just want to make sure that we want to clarify. Yep. Nope. Yep. That's that's uh, what uh, and his team had settled on. Here. And that impacts the fiscal impact, too, obviously. Yes. Yes. Keep it, keep in mind also, you know, um, it, it's also limited by the fact that, you know, you may have double, double, uh, how would I say it? Um, credits on top of each other. Right. So like Albany County folks, you know, their, their exams are, are, um, paid for. Right. So, so this, this is a very limited number, um, even still, um, that would, that would apply to. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I would, I would assume that you may, you know, for instance, between 1975 and 1990, if they served during that time, they would not qualify. And, and you could get some applicants that you may have to reject on that basis. Yes, correct. Well, they still take the test. They wouldn't get the fee. They wouldn't get the credit. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion. Got a motion. Anybody second it? I'll second. Okay, get a motion to second. Anybody opposed to it? No, so it's unanimous. Nope. Yeah, I know. There's nobody. Okay. First, I asked anybody's opposed to it. Okay. Nobody's not opposed to it. So then it's unanimous. Okay, authorizing Shaker Place Rehabilitation and Nursing Center for considered out of county applicants for the position of registered nurse, licensed practical nurses and certified nurses assistants. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. So this is uh, basically our annual um, permission uh, or ask for permission for out of county applicants for uh, the positions as listed, obviously major national and regional shortages. Um, so. 
I have a question. Go ahead, uh, uh, Lynn. I have about six questions, but I'm going to try to keep it to a few. One is uh, there was a program that uh, Larry was working on last year with uh, either Mildred Ellie or Mildred some other, uh, some kind of, did that go anywhere? Are we getting any results on those? Um, on um, so uh, bear with me in the sense that I'm going to speak in generalities and Larry can, uh, I will follow up to make sure the generalities that I express are correct. But um, that question has come up relatively recently. Actually, actually may have been at uh, another meeting of some sort with legislators. And um, my understanding is that it did happen in the sense that the uh, relationship was solidified and it began. But from what I've heard of the, I think, dozen or so folks that they sent, maybe three ended up um, staying. So um, I guess it's a long way of saying, yes, the relationship exists, but it hasn't been as successful as they had hoped. Do you expect that he's going to, does he, do you know if he's going to be trying to do that with any other, uh, you know, we got Maria, we there's a couple of other colleagues. Yeah, we do try and do that. Like Glenmont Job Corps is another, uh, yeah. that one is relatively new. Um, but yes, anybody, Maria College, uh, anybody, yes, the answer is yes. Okay, and then another question is, since we did have uh, so many COVID patients at the nursing home, are we eligible to call upon any of those people? In the interim, has there been a need for any interim staffing that the governor keeps talking about these hundreds of people that volunteer to help out? And uh, I wondered if we had looked into that or is that out of question or are we, are we okay? I guess is my staffing level question. Yeah, no, our, our staffing, staffing level okay? Our staffing level is fine, yes. Okay, so I'll take that as a no then. All right, I guess that's all for now. Sean, uh, get, uh, Mr. Chair, we have Sean raising his hand. Okay, Sean, what do you want? Uh, I just, um, I have no objection to this. I, I, we usually have backup um, showing that we made an effort to, to advertise for Ring County first. And I, I, don't, I don't really see that in the packet. And uh, second of all, we always do this for one year only. I just want to make sure we're, we're looking at well, uh, yeah, I can get you, uh, uh, you know, uh, the advertisements, uh, uh, Mr. Ward. That's not a problem if they're not included. And uh, I guess alternative is, you know, we'll we'll take as many years as you're willing to give us. How's that sound? Uh, one yeah, year. I figured that, but we've always done we've always done one year, and we've always requested backup to to show intent or, or an effort to hire in county applicants. So. And with that, I'll make a motion if everybody's comfortable. Yep, make the motion, Sean. I mean, um, for one or two, Sean, one or two. One year. One year. That's what we've done historically, is it one year? Always. One. I mean, I'm okay with two. I wonder what the other members feel. We, we've always done one, but that doesn't mean it's set in stone, but we've always done one. And there's no oh, reason. Better. I know Mike would like 10, but... I. He, he, he likes us enough. He'll come back next year if he needs more. He's right. That's true. I will come back. Absolutely. That's 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one year keeps us more in, in tune with the whole thing. Absolutely. Okay, so, you got a motion? Did you make it, Sean? I made the motion, yes. Okay. Uh, second. Anybody, second. Anybody opposed to that motion? Well, the motion, this there, is an amendment, right? This is an amendment. To okay, we vote an amendment first, Kevin. That we're doing. So let me just uh, let me just clarify. You don't need to don't formally so. make an amendment. There's no need to formally amend anything. If the basically Mr. Ward has uh, proposed moving this forward under the understanding that when it gets to the full legislature, we're going to be approving one year. No need for an amendment to anything. Okay. Uh, you don't have to formally amend executive's request. This is your prerogative. Uh, okay. How long to go with this? So. Uh, the motion is to move it forward. Uh, no need to amend it, but it's as this committee just heard under one year. Okay. Everybody understands that? Yes. Good. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you need anybody a opposed to it? Good. We got a second. Did Lynn second it? I didn't hear us. Can I hear who seconded it again? I'll second it. That's fine. Okay. Lynn seconded it. And now go ahead, Gil. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Jack. Anybody opposed to this? No. So it's unanimous then. 
Everybody's in favor? Yes. Yep. Yep. Everybody's in favor. Okay. okay. Take a motion to adjourn. Can I ask a question? Sure, Lynn. I just wondered um, if everybody had had a chance to review that document that we got from the comptroller's office having to do with the time and attendance audit. And I wondered if we had any plans to discuss anything about it in the future. <clears throat> Maybe we could set up a time. Yeah, this is this is Jeff. Um, I, it would be, I mean, the the auditor made some recommendations in there, <laughs> future action, um, way to fix some of the problems that you know that had led to led to the issues that were identified in the in the initial audit and uh i think it would be productive to have um the auditor come in and explain some of that to us you know be able to ask her some questions and and um well, i guess comp i should say comptroller not the auditor. we're talking about two different things are we there is a report on uh, the time and work stuff. Yeah. Is that not what we're talking about? Audit, which, well, I thought that what they revealed, some of it was some stuff that uh, clearly would not be under our purview, but a couple of things, you know, as the personnel committee and as policymakers, we might have some influence on. Um, so I wondered, did we want to talk about that a little bit more or was there any, uh, what you're thinking about it? I just wanted it out there that I was thinking about it. and. I think we should talk a little more about it. Well, if we do, I, I would suggest we do it in executive session if we're talking about specifics of the report. No, it's it, the report's hey, about policy. The report's That's, about policy. I think uh, there Kevin, was some personnel issues in there, though. Kevin, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Ward is correct. There's a number of personnel specific issues uh, in both, uh, depending on Mr. Kuhn, what you're talking about, whether it's the initial reports from uh, uh, the previous comptroller or the most recent one, uh, in either case, they all involve significant personnel issues. And if we do want to discuss it, uh, we would certainly be going into those issues. So I'd suggest, uh, I agree with Mr. Ward, that you go into executive session uh, on it, if, if the committee is inclined to discuss that. Yeah, well, we can invite we the control to, That's, uh, Pat, I don't know if you're on the line. If that's what we're doing, you're going to have to give Pat time to set up another meeting. As you can see, we're all on the digital formats here. Uh, we're gonna have to set that, you know, that can't be done instantly. That's that's not- right. an I wasn't suggesting that we do it today or immediately. I just suggested that I think that there are some policy things that we might have some influence about and that we might want to talk about. Yeah, there are a number of things that have, are not about specific personnel. It's about how we, uh, how we manage policy on, on, on timesheets, and there's a, there, a lot of it is frankly from the 20th century. We really need to modernize, and those are policy positions. Why don't we wait till we get back to normal and we can have a executive session meetings? Well, we don't know. Well, when we don't, we can. Can we have exec? Can we set up a Zoom executive session meeting? Uh, so you know, executive sessions, Lynn, are traditionally uh, private, aren't they? Well, well, they're done within the context of something that is already subject to an open meeting. So you're, you're not, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're going to an executive session, you're already in the middle of a normal meeting of a group that has a quorum. Uh, that's when an executive session becomes relevant. So if you decide uh, to discuss this in some other format, uh, not subject to open meetings law, that's a different story. Well, we're, we're having an executive session tonight in the finance committee, so it's, it's not like we can't do it. it well, no, uh, Mr. Grimm, that's certainly true. We could do it. We could hold another meeting. The problem is the executive session we set up for audit and finance. So Pat, uh, feel free to jump in, but it, it took a little doing to set up. Uh, it's working with IT. It wasn't as if we set this up in the last uh, few moments before the meeting. Uh, this was a sudden request, and I you know, respectfully asked him to give him time if, you want to call another uh, meeting, Mr. Chairman? I'm certainly we can do that. Yeah, I would call know. another meeting, but I want I really have it called when we're back to normal. Well, I, we we don't know when that's going to be. Well, I mean, it's going to be whenever, whenever we decide to go back to normal. But in the meantime, how long has this been around? Well, the comptroller's report came out. I want to say April 29th. Three, yeah, three or four weeks ago. Yeah. And 
from from my perspective, there are there are certainly issues in the report that deal with specific individuals, and and obviously, you know, we we, we shouldn't be discussing personnel issues having to do with specific individuals in open session. <clears throat> but there are also issues that were raised in that that were matters of general policy that have to do with timekeeping, um, and those are the kind of things that I think we don't need to go into executive session to discuss. And I would, I read, I read Comptroller Rizzo's um, follow-up report, and she, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in there that that is thought provoking, and I would like to, I, I think it would be productive to have um, her come into one of our meetings and for us to have an opportunity to ask follow-up questions about some of the recommendations that are in there. There are recommendations in there, but you know we need if we're going to if we're going to reduce some of those recommendations to legislation to, to address and to the problems that, that have been identified, I certainly would like to have more information and, and ability to, to discuss it with the comptroller. I think that's a great idea. Just give an example. Subordinates can sign timesheets for those they report to. Now, that's bad policy. That needs to change. And that's one recommendation that the controller had. Well, will the rest any input for anybody else? What did I you think say, Gil? It would be good. Any to... more input for anybody else on having a meeting? Yeah, Dustin. Um, no, I, I I think we should have a meeting on this. Um, I think that it would be good to at least start discussions on the policy side that that and the recommendations from this report, and um, you know, get some input from everyone on you know recommendations we agree with, what else, what things we might recommend. Uh, from this, and you know, I think we can separate out the personnel side. I think we could also have been, you know, a first meeting um, before we move to um, necessarily bring in the comptroller or anyone else um, to to speak. Um, but uh, I, I think we should at least start discussions on this. And um, you know, I know, um, you know, there are some. Uh, there's always some some thought on what normal is and what the new normal is and you know what sort of normal we might return to but um you know i'm of the mind that uh we can conduct our full business as county legislators through um zoom remotely the way we have been so i, I think we should go full steam ahead with everything we would be doing if we were meeting in person as we were a few months ago what do you I'd think like of to, that uh, kevin yeah you know uh mr chairman and, and members of the committee i think it's your, uh, your certainly within your discretion to hold any meetings that uh, you desire. Um, I, I think that some of it needs to be dealt with uh, appropriately within the confines of what we need to discuss in the executive session. But uh, if the meeting or if the committee is asking to hold a meeting in the future, we certainly can set that up, Mr. Chairman. At your request, the request has to uh, be made. Uh, through the chairman's office that we can coordinate it through our procedures, but certainly we can do that. Well, okay. is it the sense of the committee that we would like ha to have a robust discussion of this at the uh, at next personnel committee? The generic issues, the, the, the sort of timekeeping policy issues that, that the comptroller has indicated need, need uh, addressing and remedying? Well, I, I think, yeah, I, I think we should have the controller as an agenda item for our next meeting and discuss policy recommendations that we can move on quickly to, to fix some of the problems. And that should be part well, we're of it. We're not going to discuss personnel? No, no not yeah. individuals, no. It's how we, how we manage things. I agree wholeheartedly. I think a generic, um, you know, systemic discussion is the first and foremost thing that we need to accomplish. And I think we can do that uh, at the next committee meeting. All right, I'm not opposed to that as long as we don't bring up uh, personnel stuff without. Uh, Mr. Price. Chairman, yeah, Mr. Ward raising his hand. Okay, Sean, what do you got to say? I, I, I have a feeling that if we get into this discussion, it'll be more than the time allotted for a personnel committee meeting. I would suggest it maybe we do it as a separate meeting and, and allot enough time because you know we're in the middle of other meetings Kevin, you can correct me if you sure. will, but I, I, I just don't see this getting over. We're not even done with this meeting 
and a half sure. hour from the delve into a whole policy, uh, timekeeping policy, I got to believe that we're going to need more time than a half hour. Good point. Sure. I think there's a lot, you know, a lot seems the mid, um, committee members want to discuss and there's a lot in the report. Uh, so I, I don't disagree. I think a longer period might be warranted. I just want to thank, thank uh, you, Legislator Lakakis for raising this issue. Thank you. And, and I apologize to Legislator Lakakis and Kuhn. I thought you were talking about the controller's retirement audit that we oh, had that's timekeeping. Yeah, uh, I, that's what I, I, I was confused on that, but both of you were both on, on target of what you're talking about. So what, um, so what is the sense of the committee in terms of the order that which we, we would address this? Do we think it would make sense to have a discussion with the comptroller in the first instance? That tends to be where I come yeah. down. Um, yeah. I feel like for our internal discussions to be most productive, it would be <laughs> helpful to have, to have her insights um, and to be able to ask some questions about her report before we will, we will we also be inviting Connors to that too. Oh well, listen. Everybody can weigh in on that. My that's not. I don't feel that we need to invite the former comptroller, but if other people feel that they need to, I don't. I'm not. I don't have any principled objection to it. Well, my can, my, can we my compromise and like have her on the phone with us for the first 15 minutes or so and get some clarification or half an hour. And then we can try to have a discussion directly after that. And if that doesn't work, then we can reschedule another meeting. My, my thought on it, I don't believe the former controller made any recommendations that we're going to consider, but the present controller has. So right. Why would we need right. that? I, I think we just want the present controller, my personal opinion. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Mr. Chairman, this is Arn. It's Arn uh, Zogmi, Minority Council. I, I, I would like to point out one item, though. Uh, the rules to be changed are clearly established by the legislature, but those rules are actually directly, will directly affect management. And in order to have a fair discussion, I think not only the auditor, the controller's office should come before you, but also the director of HR should have, uh, you know, there are anomalies that come come up in the audit and maybe it's something that happens a hundred times and needs to be addressed. Maybe it happens one time and it doesn't need to be addressed, but I really do think you need the, uh, uh, either Sean Thalen to come in for management and budget and also the HR director, whether the same evening or different evenings, because I do agree with Mr. Ward that this is going to take some time for a complete discussion. Okay. Any, any way you want to do it, it's okay with me. Why don't you get together? What do you decide? Kevin, what do you think? So, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, whatever the decision is, and I, I think I, I've got the sense of it, uh, we're going to have to make a formal request. I'm sure Mike uh, and the exec side, uh, as always, through a normal procedure, appreciate the formal request to bring people in. And for the comptroller, uh, we'll also have to make a request to her. So I just want to be clear on what we're requesting. Uh, for the first, for the next meeting, uh, which we'll schedule through the chair's office. You s only want to have the comptroller, uh, the current comptroller there, uh, and uh, commissioner of management and budget from the exec's office. Is that right? Well, I, I think want it? HR personnel, HR, and HR, and HR, okay, HR as well. Anybody else you think should be there? You know, I think um, honest. Oh, go go ahead, uh, Len. I was just, you know, I probably am jumping ahead, but I was wondering, we can talk to IT later if there's something that they need to be involved in or if it's possible for them to, you know, I'd like to just buy a whole new uh, timekeeping system, but you know, whatever. A 21st century one, but that's my take on the whole thing. But uh, I'm going to keep an open mind and listen to what everybody has to say. So let's uh, schedule it up. Are we going to wait a whole month or can we do it between now and then? So, uh, Mr. Chairman, this answers your question as well. I, I misspoke. Uh, Brandon just texted me and uh, said he heard that Mr. Ward pointed out he is correctly saying we need longer than a normal meeting. Uh, I think doing it in between now and the legislative meeting would be uh, difficult. Uh, no, I meant 
personnel yeah. meeting. Yeah. Sure. Uh, that's certainly, you know, the prerogative of the committee to decide if, whether it's from after, after the next legislative meeting when they want to have it. Okay. So we won't have it between now and the next meeting. We'll have it yeah, after that. So uh, now, bet between now and June 8th would uh, would be a little too short notice. But yeah. any time from June 8th and then the next uh, the next personnel meeting is the fourth fourth uh, Thursday fourth Thursday of June, which I'd have to look at for that date. Uh, you've got the 25th Thursday, uh, Thursday the 25th. So between the 8th and the 25th, you've got a two week window essentially. No, we got Kevin. Is that Kevin? You were talking, Kevin. <laughs> That's me yes. talking. That's me talking, Gil. Yeah, okay. So. Talking. Okay. Okay. So are we all done discussing everything? Yes. So, I guess to be clear, the chairman then is going to at some point uh, call a me a special meeting, and invite uh, the the controller and the HR director. <laughs> Uh, to uh, add, talk about potential policy changes. Is that what everyone's clear about? And also clear anybody else who you think may uh, be instrumental, we can invite them to. Okay. So we're well, not limited to just anybody in the meantime, between now and we have the meeting, any suggestions from the committee, anybody else you want there, whoever you want there, invite. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Well, Chairman. Yeah, that cover all the bases for everybody? Yeah. 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 We could have two people, we could have five, we could have uh, 17, whatever you, whatever everybody feels comfortable with. Up to 100. Well, that's okay, too. Open government, that's what we need. Will you be getting a, uh, you know, an, an iPhone by then, Gil? No, I, I'll stay the old oh, way. I want to see your face. No, I, I love you all, but you don't want to see me. I, I bite my tongue now. I'm not cursing, I'm not yelling, I'm not screaming, I ain't doing nothing. Okay. I'm stuck in my basement. This is this is mystery voice coming out of the area. Nobody, can, nobody can see him. <laughs> no, but all kidding aside, whoever you feel comfortable having there, we'll have him there. Okay, cool. that sounds great. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. thanks, Mr. All right, Chairman. Good. Thank Gail, you, you guys. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Got a second? We're out of here. Yes. Good night.